In this video, we'll be showing how to optimize your PC's graphics for use with your simulator. Everyone's PCs and projector specs are different, so there's not a one-size-fits-all solution in that regard. We're going to show you how to apply these principles to get the best graphics out of your setup. Let's explain how graphics function. Uh, your computer is the most important aspect to achieving the highest possible graphics performance with your simulator. Everything else relies on the graphics capability of your computer. For example, if you have a 4K projector, but your computer is only capable of 1920 by 1080, you won't be able to take advantage of and actually use that 4K resolution that your projector is capable of, since it isn't actually producing graphics, but rather receiving them from the computer. Likewise, with whatever simulation software you're running, if you aren't running higher resolutions within that software, you won't actually be seeing those resolutions through your projector. In general, you want your computer's graphics capabilities to be equal or higher than the capabilities of your projector and software. Most high-definition golf simulator software will have recommendations for the specs of the computer that you should be using to run the program. All recommendations from the software companies include having a separate graphics card. For reference, the computers we use with our golf simulator include these specs. Intel Core i7 processor, NVIDIA GeForce 3080 graphics card, 16 gigabytes memory, two terabyte HDD, 512 gigabytes SSD. High graphics settings are very taxing on your computer's processing power. And if your computer is capable of high enough graphics specifications, but seems to be jittering during gameplay, you'll have a much better performance changing your settings from say 4K to 1920 by 1080 or 120 hertz to 60 hertz. Ultimately, it's personal preference about how you balance performance versus quality, which means you might be doing a lot of trial and error until you just find that sweet spot. First off is to figure out the graphic specs of your projector, specifically resolution and refresh rate. In our example, our projector has a maximum resolution of 3840 by 2160 or 4K. Uh, the projector also has a refresh rate of 60 Hertz at 4K. Next, we find the maximum graphic specs for our computer. Our computer is capable of 4K resolution at 60 Hertz. So we'll be able to use our projector's maximum resolution and refresh rate of 3840 by 2160 at 60 Hertz. To check or change your computer's output of graphics and resolution, go to your display settings, select the projector display, and scroll down to the display resolution and select the desired resolution. Next, scroll down to advanced display settings. From here, you're able to change your refresh rate output to your projector. Select your desired refresh rate, usually the highest capable for best image quality, and return to your desktop. Now, we want to optimize our software resolution settings. Most programs will allow you to modify the graphics within their settings, and the process is similar for most applications. For our examples, we'll show you how to modify your graphics within GS Pro, E6, and TGC. GS Pro makes it very easy to find some of the main settings that will help you get the most graphically out of it. As soon as you launch the program, the first window that pops up, GS Pro Configuration, will have options to adjust your graphics and resolution settings. Once you're in and playing a simulated course, you can change the frame rate settings with GS Pro keyboard shortcuts by pressing the F key. Press F once and the default VSync 1 is displayed. Vertical sync is technology that matches up the frame rate of the game with the refresh rate of the monitor in use. Courses made in GS Pro might have different refresh rates, so checking these settings often might help you get the most out of your software. To adjust some E6 Connect graphics settings, enter the settings menu, go to the system config, video, SSAA, which is super sampling anti-aliasing. Here, you can change the resolution up to 8K, Configure the settings to match your computer's display resolution and frame rate. If you're seeing performance issues, tinker around with some lower settings and see what works best. For adjusting graphics settings within TGC, from the home page, click on settings, then graphics, and you'll be able to adjust the quality level, V-Sync and anti-aliasing resolution, along with turning on or off the depth of field, bloom, SSAO, and full screen. 
At the bottom of that page in the graphic settings, you can also adjust these settings to improve performance. Render scale, object detail, water quality, shadow quality, sky quality, fog quality, fog shadow quality, high clouds quality. These settings are more for fine tuning your graphics performance. As always, the more you lower the quality for any graphic settings, the smoother it will run. All in all, uh, there's quite a few settings in your golf simulator software to get the most out of the graphics and give you a true HD golf simulation experience. Uh, but many of these settings are simply up to your personal preference. It might take some trial and error to figure out what settings work best for you. Make sure to comment below with any questions you may have about optimizing the graphics for your setup. And if you found this information helpful, please take the time to like this video as it really informs us of what content you find helpful and it improves our performance in YouTube's algorithms. As always, subscribe for more content on building your own golf simulator setup.